when you heal um, the need to be shamed and to shame others, right? Mm -hmm. Um, within yourself, then that sends a ripple effect out into the um, collective consciousness to make it less of a thing, right? So like right now, everybody's shaming. But what if we took responsibility and realized they're just doing their thing? Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Wealth Within Us. I am Michelle Blaze, and today I have Grace Moskeller with us again, and I will have a link to our previous interview below, just so you can reference. But Grace Moskeller is a spiritual healing and transformation specialist who helps leaders and light workers repair difficult, distant, or toxic relationships and step into their greatness and thrive all at the same time. She is passionate about the power of an open, undefended heart to influence and prosper, which she describes in her new book, The Self-Healing Handbook, and the second edition of her first book, The Freedom to Flourish, Stop Hustling and Start Process, Profiting. They are both being released this fall, so check out for them. And we will probably have you back on, Grace, for that. And her signature talk is Forgiveness for Business Breakthroughs, which lays the foundation of how to win and achieve with kindness, respect, and courage while having a strong self-respecting boundaries that empower and unify conflict for mutually benefit outcomes. So Grace <laughs> is here today to talk about her latest self-healing passion, 9D breathwork and sound healing. And I'm so excited to have you back on and talk about this because I had the pleasure of experiencing your 9D breathwork myself. And it was different from the breathwork that I had experienced before. So if some of you are thinking, oh, I know what breathwork is, this may be a little different than you think, maybe even a lot more different than you think. So, Grace, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Michelle. Thanks for having me on again. And I always enjoy hanging out with you. Of course. And um, I really, really appreciate you know, giving this platform to help people really dive into the wealth within. Mm -hmm. So I want to start off on my experience with 9D breath work um, with a little story. Is that okay? Oh, absolutely. I love stories. Stories are how we live and tell our lives. So go ahead. Okay. So I'm standing on a stage in Bali with my heart open, undefended, and fulfilled in front of 200 people. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling charismatic, impactful, and on purpose. And I'm sharing my hero's journey to love, wholeness, and success after experiencing difficult, distant, and toxic re relationships with my parents. And that relationship with my parents really crippled my power mm. to create, to expand, to connect, to have next level success in adulthood. So people in the audience are laughing, they're crying, and they've given me a standing ovation. And I'm feeling really proud of myself because I wasn't always this impactful. During a TV commercial recording about 10 years ago, I witnessed my voice go from full and strong to higher, higher, and then squeaky, <laughs> and then completely disappearing as my throat just by itself, squeeze my voice box shut. Oh, um, I would at networking events. It was always easier to let people talk about their business. Mm -hmm. And I would always redirect conversation back to them because talking about myself and how I serve people was just super uncomfortable for me. I, I just felt really squirmy and, and kind of ashamed. Right. And at that time you had your own business, right? Uh-huh. It's really hard to make money when you're doing that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excuse me for cussing. And then for, it used to be easier for me just to talk in a camera without connecting with anybody, just like looking at the, the little dot Yeah. to connect eye to eye with people. And I knew the root cause was shame. I knew the root cause was low, was low self-esteem. And, you know, that's half the reason why I became a spiritual healing and transformation specialist because I needed it so much mm -hmm. myself. And isn't that true that it's like what we end up, like we end up, what we end up healing, we then become the healer of. 
Well, yeah, that's the way that's the way any hero's journey goes. And we are all on a path of a hero's journey. It's just whether you are confident or committed enough to step forward and take it. Right. And you know, so the mess, your mess is your message, right? And oh, so I my love yeah. And <laughs> that makes sense. Your message, your message. It's so true. Message, your message, right? And it took me a long time to really lean into it because I was so, quote, ashamed. So how does that relate to 9D breath work? So um, the standing on stage in Bali um, was a part of a retreat that I did to actually, for my business, to learn how to tell stories, just like what I just did in front of people to bring people into my business. And I was so blessed and honored to be with a group of 12 people that were all doing the same thing. Mm. And the, the, the leader of the group, um, Colleen Shell from FabX, um, she had Brian Kelly, who's the founder of 9D Breathwork. They're friends, like he was her client, right? And he came and fitted us all with um, noise canceling headsets. And then took us on this IMAX-like journey um, into our subconsciousness. And the journey he chose, and there's different journeys journeys that you can chose. The journey he chose was, that Colleen chose for us, was um, releasing the five trauma imprints of childhood. Hmm. The five, yeah. what are the, do we know what the five, are they different for everyone? So I've never heard that the five trauma imprints imprints of childhood yeah no they're not different for everybody everybody's got the same ones okay um, premature separation from love of course rejection and abandonment right mm -hmm. shaming and lack of presence you know lack of presence is the distance right when you, you have a yeah. parent it's just they're present but they're not there what's the shaming part from early childhood because i've always equated shaming with more adolescent and then into adulthood. Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> well, that's why I asked. <laughs> My mom's wagging her finger at me and I'm about five years old, maybe okay. six. Because, and she said, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm like, at five years old, why am I ashamed? Well, I had been running outside on a summer evening and it was like, cool and brisk and I was like having the time of my life I love to run and chase and play and they she kept calling Grace come in it's time to watch Disneyland and I'm like yeah I want to watch Disneyland but I'm going to run a little bit more so finally when I was ready I came in and here's this finger wagging at me mm. you should be ashamed of yourself so I asked her what is that well it's shame you know I don't remember what she said but shame is that feeling of doing something wrong mm. And being criticized, judged, punished. It almost is, it's its not wrong. It's sometimes wrong in someone else's eyes. So it's not necessarily wrong, it sounds like. But it was wrong in her eyes at that moment. Maybe yeah, on yeah, another yeah, night, yeah. maybe she could have cared less. No, no, that, not okay. them. <laughs> not, not them. Not them. They had their rules, right? So if you break a rule, and in today's society, if you break a rule, the shame is going to get a lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. Look, you, you did this wrong, and you should be punished. Or public shaming now on social media, I will add. And it's so much easier to shame, I would say, on a really broad level. Yeah, no lie. Yes, and so that shame... Well, and if we're talking um, the difference between just one person and then the collective consciousness, like the people, yeah, that's why I'm self healing and transformation is so important. And I'm passionate about it. It's been important for everyone because when you heal um, the need to be shamed and to shame others, right, mm -hmm. um, within yourself, then that sends a ripple effect out into the um, collective consciousness to make it less of a thing. Right. So like right now, everybody's shaming. But what if we took responsibility and realized they're just doing their thing? They broke your rules, but not theirs. Yeah. It's so like, true. Like I was a little girl, I was running around. And, yeah. yeah, maybe I should have come in. And she was like wanting me to be safe and you know, do the family thing. But that I was like, I'm fine. I'm happy. Why should I come in? You know, and so, but. So the shame, the shame is huge as the number one yes. color of personal power. Mm. 
Because anytime there's shame, there, that implies that there's been um, a rule broken, something's wrong, and if and there's punishment's got to come up. Mm-hmm. And if you like, for me, you know, and many of us, especially the light workers, the sensitive empath types, we take all that shame and we blame ourselves because we're not wired to blame other people. Or if we do blame other people, we become the victims and say, see, because of you, I'm a victim. And because I'm a victim, I can't, which is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's that whole personal responsibility thing. Like we are not in so many ways, like you just said, taught to take personal responsibility for our actions. And which is so ironic because it's like, we're not taught to take personal responsibility but yeah, we feel shame, which is kind of personal responsibility in a way. I don't know. Like, what do you think of that? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Cause somebody, when there's, um, shame, when someone's broken a rule and it's not been communicated well, it's not been transmuted into, you know, taking that energy of conflict and, you know, I'm voicing, oh, that wasn't fair. You hurt me because nobody voices that. They just point the finger and wag and either you take it on yourself or you seek revenge somehow. Right. Um, but instead of taking that up into, wow, I want to understand this from a higher perspective and realize they were, wasn't about me. Mm-hmm. Like with my mom, it was about her rules, not mine. And she was trying to make my rule, her rules, my rules, which is what happens when you're a little kid. You don't have power and you have to, right? Yeah. And you have to trust that they've got your best interest in heart. But if it's not explained, then, you know, the, you miss, you just automatically, especially as a little kid, you just think, yeah. oh, it must be my fault. Mm. I must be something wrong. So I carried that into adulthood. So in these five primary trauma implants, which is premature separation from love, rejection, abandonment, shaming, and lack of presence, they silently shape our adult lives. Mm. And they reveal us through various challenges like victimness, trust, and intimacy into issues, codependency, whether you're dependent on a helicopter type parent or um, person in power around you, or you are that, right? Um, Relationship struggles, emotional dysregulation, anxiety depression right so we the the 12 of us each one of us we were in a circle with a headset on we're in a, a shala an outdoor shala which is like one of those big hot thingies you know without okay. and the breeze is moving through and there's bali jungle all around and you're hearing waterfalls because there's water everywhere right and birds and it's just um, amazing um well, you're hearing that before the headsets, but then we're we're in the headsets. And so there's nine dimensions of sound and healing are piped through the headsets. And it's like being in an IMAX theater, but you're in your deep subconscious and they trigger the deepest um, parts of us to come to the surface. And then um, with the breath work, and, you know, the somatic breath work, it goes into our body. Mm-hmm. And remember, our issues are in our tissues, right? And so it illuminates that. Remember, whenever there's light, the darkness gets illuminated. And mm-hmm. if you want to turn off the darkness or the stuck emotions, the stuck traumas, the stuck memories the of lack, of limit, of, you know, all those things that we don't like, right? Um, and we put light on them and we keep shining light on them. They're going to disappear. So it's not well known, but the breath work is huge because our, it's our natural way of letting go of our, quote, stuff. Yes. Yes. So, and without having to, like, relive it all, too. Um, you, but if you relive it, you live it from a distance. You live it from a higher perspective. So many kind of, many have, like, so after that that journey, so in that particular journey, I was, because I had done so much work on shame already, I realized I could see 
that it really wasn't my fault. Like we know it's not our fault, right? And yeah. so like with the work I do with people and I've done a session or two with you too, is it's like between your brain and then actually knowing it in your body, knowing it, you know, it's that mind body connection and the body is what um, um, trans, you know, just sends out what we believe about ourselves in our subconscious. And so I was able to actually embrace and know and flip and let go of the shame of being me. Because one of the other big shaming points in my life, I don't know if anybody else has it, is you don't want this. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Or talk to me when you're not crying. So are you ashamed to have an emotion? Yeah. Or you should have done it this way, not that way. You know, like me and the little girl running outside is like, huh, what? Mm -hmm. My soul was having fun. So therefore my soul is wrong. So I have to hide my soul in order to get love. Right. So that's what we're talking about shame. And so I was able to let that go. And when I let go of the shame of being me, <laughs> when I walked on stage, it was okay to be me. And I'm a little different, right? I'm a little out there. We've got different ways of thinking of things. And I was able to be in my core in the the, the 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 love core connected to heaven, connected to earth, connected to my purpose, and having my voice clear and free to say my message and connect with a crowd, which is new for me, like super new. So that's when you know that immediately after the breathwork journey, I knew that this took spiritual healing and transformation to a new category, to mm. a new level. Like it's so transformative, right? And I and I think the journey we took you on was the um, financial abundance. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So financial abundance, I think, is a little bit of a watered down journey compared to these um, other ones. Okay. So there's other journeys that you can go on. So the five primary trauma imprints we just talked about. Um, then we also there's abundance, right? Mm -hmm. Is really really good. So it talks about a lot about fear of stepping, um, fear of no. Um, talks about a lot about fear of stepping into um, your true self, which is yeah. similar, right. That the themes are similar. Yeah, so and I think most of us struggle with that on whatever level because abundance is like or prosperity is kind of the result of all the other things of not of feeling shame of all these other things, which then leads to feeling not worthy. So it's kind of almost the result of these five traumas that you were talking about, correct? Yeah, yeah and that this creates lack, limit, and mm -hmm. um, not victim. deserving. Not deserving vic victim, and because of you, I, I'm going to always be a victim. And one thing about victimhood is, you know, if you're still alive, you survived. If you're a survivor, not a victim. And yeah. it's, time to, it's time to let that story go. But anyhow, so there's one for stress and anxiety, which is mm -hmm. awesome transcending fear which i really really love because it does talk about um going to the next level in your business financially or getting closer in relationships okay. um, and yeah. fear is like for me i always say fear is the number way one way that we're all kind of controlled and programmed in the first place well yeah um yes you controlled by well when i went through the fear journey the main message for that. And it's different every time because you do these more than once, right? Yeah. And they recommend doing them once a week. But the fear journey for me was um, <laughs> realizing that I was controlled by fear. Mm. And you know, like, it, and like if you don't do this, this will happen. Yeah. You have to do this or that will happen. Instead of if I do this, these beautiful things will happen. And you know, and that's the, the the mindset shift that happens within these things, quantum level, really quick, yeah. really, really deep. And releasing fear, that's truly the only way that we can live as sovereign beings, the way that we were meant to. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. So there's um reconnecting with your inner child, which is amazing because um uh <laughs> It's just life transforming because you connect with love mm. 
in such a way, you know, you hold your baby, you hold your little girl and you connect with love and it's such, with such a way. And, you know, this is more than just anything you do one-on-one with somebody or in a group with people, because there's these nine different layers that have really got you dialed in to connect with yourself and the universe and with, with pure divine love. And so the love that you feel is unlike any love that you felt in real life. And remember, love heals, love transforms, love is all you need, right? And so <laughs> recording with your little inner child, your inner child all of a sudden relaxes and feels safe. And safe is all first chakra money issues, your place in the tribe, how, uh, how impactful are you? How can, how much can you create? Mm. This is so huge. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It, I think it's bigger than I think we realize actually, because a lot of times we're sort of like running around on this autopilot and we're mostly not even thinking about why we're doing it, how we got there, let alone how to get out of it. Yes. Yes. How to get out. So this is how to get out of it. And this is like really, really easy. So there's another one for um, reprogramming your subconscious mind. And then there's a new release they just came out with is um, 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 overcoming grief and loss. Oh, that's a good one. So let me tell you what those nine layers are, because it's kind of kind of layers. Yeah. So it's 90, which means nine dimensions, right? Nine layers, nine dimensions. Uh huh. And so the first one is, of course, multidimensional sound. So it's like surround sound. Okay. And, and I, I kid you not, the um, when you've got the headsets on or your earbuds on, if you're doing it online, because you can do this in person or via Zoom. I've got lots of Zoom journeys coming up. They start in July, um, next tomorrow, right? <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, so, but the, the sound, you can feel them making circles in your heads mm-hmm. and figure eights. And like, um, there was a couple of times when I'm in there, I was like drifting off to sleep, which happens a lot in meditations. Mm -hmm. And there's a voice in there that just says, come back, you know, and it just kind of comes in from the, it's like really, really cool. So night, so there's surround sound. Then of course, there's the somatic breath work. And that's the most important part because we're there and they guide you that you're guided during these meditations, during these journeys to how to breathe so that you get the maximum effect of what they're going for. Um, Then there's guided vocal coaching. Um, And that helps you rewire, it helps you rewire how you see things. So you get to see it from a higher perspective instead of into the dance of, of struggle, you know, like Einstein said, you know, you can't solve problems at the same layer that you're created at. You got to look at them from a higher perspective. And so that's embedded in there as well. Um, There's something called sophigio frequencies. I might've pronounced that incorrectly, but they, um, they're designed to balance our body's energy system. Mm. And, you know, when our bodies are in balance, then, um, parasympathetic peace takes over and we're out of fight or flight. And that's when we heal. Right? Mm. And I think most of us, that's our day to day is fight or flight, whether we realize it or not. Most of us, you know, even just <laughs> sometimes I feel like driving wherever I'm going, it's like fight or flight. <laughs> Cause you're like, what's this person doing? What are they doing? Why did they just cut me off? I mean, oh my gosh, driving is like, Total fighter. <laughs> yeah, you make, it, make it about them instead of you. Yes. And so, yes. And so, like the goal of spiritual healing and transformation, the goal of of prosperity and everything is realizing it's all about me. It's mm. not about, it is about me. It's not, well, it is. It's not about. It's not about them. It's about me yes. and how and keeping my vibe, my vibe high, keeping it in peace, keeping it in sovereignty, as you said before, mm-hmm. right? So that your heart is open and undefended and can follow the urges of your soul without shame, without guilt, without fear, without all that, right? Yeah, without questioning. I think so much of us had questioning or hesitation or doubt. Doubt's huge. Mm -hmm. So then there's also 432 harmonic tuning. When 432 hertz, that's the harmonies of nature, of the cosmos and of our bodies. And so it's like how we're all one. Mm -hmm. So tune into that oneness of the universe. Um, There's binaural beats. 
There's isochronic brainwave tones, tone, Ooh, yeah. which is similar to binaural beats, but just one at a time instead of ding, 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 it's jung. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Right? And then um, subliminal hypnotic therapy. Yeah. And then um, the world-class music composition. And um, you just, yeah, the, the music is just amazing. Okay, so those are the nine... Those are the nine D's, the nine dimensions that when you're listening to, this is what's coming in by a frequency and sound to your body. Right. And then you're also breathing on cue to them at the same time. And so the breathing, um, the, uh, the sometimes they want you to breathe through your nose. And when you breathe through your nose, that you know, you're always calming down and resting, bringing in the peace. And then when you breathe through your mouth, the outcome for that is to really bring air, as much air into your body as possible to open, right? And when we do that, um, our CO2 levels build up. And so you almost feel like you're going to pass out sometimes. But um, many have said that they go kind of into outer space. They they have like a, a plant medicine journey, but without taking any of the drugs. Okay. Which is so, that's pretty amazing. Right. So you don't have to do mushrooms or I loose gun unless you want to. But I mean, you can get to those states with this breath work. Mm. And then um, you'll get messages from the divine and from your ancestors. Um, yes, I forgot that there's a one for healing the ancestral lines that I just did this week. Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. And, it, and it's all designed to help you return to love. This is huge self-healing, huge self-care. And, you know, and then so when you come from love, this is your wealth within. Mm. And so this is how, this is like, for me, I've been doing this 27, almost 28 years, right? And this is the, it's in a category of its own for <laughs> spiritual healing and transformation is for how to get over your stuff quickly and gently. I mean, it's still, there's it's still kind of gunk in there, but it's not, yeah. like you're facing, you're not reliving it. You're letting it go. You're like saying, yeah, no, enough. Yeah, and with the breathing, sometimes the breathing can get intense as well. I know when I did that journey with you, I kind of definitely drifted off somewhere. I mean, sometimes I don't even know. Am I falling asleep? I don't, it doesn't feel like I'm falling asleep. It feels like I'm actually going somewhere more than anything else. Yeah. And then when I came back to whatever was on it, I, I was laying down. And all of a sudden I felt like this big push right up in my hips and literally my hips jumped right up and I don't know if something released or what, but it was like very, very noticeable. Um, and I could feel whatever was happening, but yeah. just before that I had gone somewhere. Where do, where do you think it is that we go? Even when we sleep, we go somewhere. Well, that's your soul re getting replenished. And so, um, and when we get, well, like when you leave and go off and like in, mm -hmm. in some meditations, there's different realms. You can go to the astral realm or you can go to the, the spiritual realm, the, um, the soul realm or the angel realms. And then you can also do what the shamans do as they go down into the earth mm -hmm. and into the terrestrial realms. And it, that's not my focus. I mean, I've been trained on it a little bit. It's not my strength. Yeah. I'm not the one to really talk about that much. No, no, that's okay. But I just, I wanted to just make sure people knew that that's normal. Yes, it's normal. And sometimes I'm going to, and the other thing is because it's breath work and like you were talking about your hips, right? And so um, the hips represent moving forward in life, you know, uh, and if you're, you're like lifting up, letting them down. It's like reset, right? For you. Oh, uh, okay. I happen to know a little bit about you and you're going through a huge yeah. reset. And so, very true. <laughs> it's very true. Isn't that cool? Right. And like for me, um, for my, my, the big one that allowed me to speak on stage after having a voice that would squeak down out of my control is like, yeah, don't talk about yourself. Like, oh, right. Yeah. I'm shutting down that whole throat chakra. The whole thing. Right. And so I'm on stage and I'm like myself and I'm charismatic and I'm like, oh, <laughs> And, you know, the, the coaches came up to me afterwards and just said, hey, Grace, you got the most response. I mean, and people were laughing the most and they were crying the most mm -hmm. um, out of the 12 people. 
And, yeah. you know, it wasn't a perfect delivery, not by the, you know, first time on the stage, you know, it's more and more and more and more. But I just like the outcomes of really being impactful and connecting with the audience mm -hmm. could never have done that if I was ashamed to share myself. Yes. And fear. And I think that that goes along with fear, too, because a lot of like public speaking, that's a huge fear for so many people. Well, yeah, it's more than death, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and that the fear is the fear of being exposed, all those five rejection, the of of being of rejected, of being abandoned, of being judged, of being, you know, yeah. And nobody likes that. That doesn't feel good. No. So, but if you run a business, you got to get up and speak. Yes. Right? yes. And if you want to be closer and connected. Um, you know, and you don't want to ha keep having betrayals and stuff like that. You have to be able to say, you know what, that wasn't fair. I deserve this. And you can't do that if you're mired down in, yeah. the, in this stuff. And so that's why I'm so passionate about helping leaders and light workers really step into their power. And it's the power of love, right? That wealth yeah. within. That's the wealth within. Yeah. And, um, leaders get to lead with kindness with respect, you know, and hand out the carrots. Yeah. Instead. Because I, if, you first uh, have to have it for yourself. So if I don't have kindness, love and respect for myself, and that goes along with, I mean, it couldn't, it, it's possibly not even just shame that other people have got you, but shame that we feel about ourselves. Like, Oh, I did this thing. And you're like, Oh my gosh, so many of us just carry some of that stuff. Like I did this thing. And now it's like releasing that stuff. And it sounds like the more we can bring ourselves to that point, then what we've healed in ourselves, we can, you know, like heal in others as well. So the, the big shame thing that I had that, you know, cause I remember I said in the beginning that, Oh, but well, you, you just learn to be ashamed of yourself in adulthood. And, you know, like the law of attraction just kicks in the gear. Oh, she just wants more and more opportunities to feel ashamed. So that's what we all want, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So whether you want it or not. So that's why it's also so important to clear up your insides if you really want. So um, the shame thing led me to um, um, and being a parent that um, people would classically say are narcissistic. Um, um, I own that really verbally abused my children. And one of them I actually kicked, which um, I talk about in my talk. And, um, I was so ashamed. I punished myself. Right. So if there's, if someone's broken a rule, someone's got need to be punished. And if you, if you've got the personality that doesn't punish others and you take it on yourself, you punish yourself. So if it feels like you can't take a vacation, if it feels like you can't reach your money goals, if it feels like you can't stop working, like you have to always work, even if you got a lot of money, right? Or you can't enjoy the abundance that you have, there's some, you know, I invite you, check in, you know, what, where am I, is there some sort of shame or guilt or yeah. some kind of, you know, trauma in the past has, um, affected me and am I how am I blaming myself and you know a lot of people with autoimmune disorders um you know I can say this I can talk to this because I healed myself I mean you healed yourself as well but I did it with spiritual healing and transformation through um uh I mean I wasn't really doing it on purpose I was just trying to um you know heal the relationship with my children and with myself but um the throat issue that went away um and then um, the, what do you call it? Hashimoto's, low thyroid, mm -hmm. adrenal fatigue, so stress, and then also um, fibromyalgia. Um, you know, my body was racked, every muscle, every joint, in total exhaustion. I couldn't eat without bloating. And the spiritual healing and transformation got yeah. out of it. And the root cause of that was is when you're beating up yourself. Mm -hmm. when you beat yourself up and you're giving your energy away just to prove that you're good and you know and all of us that are givers that give 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 and then we're just not receiving back in proportion to what we're giving right yeah, and, very much so <laughs> i know and so but that's like giving to a bottomless pit that's never going to give back yeah and so how to bring that in so that you have self-respecting boundaries that 
fuel you so that you're connected to heaven and earth and that you're fueled with your own wealth flow, Mm -hmm. your own Midas power. And then that self-respecting boundary is of love, not of distance. You know, like so many of us have narcissistic families, Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody that we know that's a narcissist and we like to label them and do the no contact or low contact, which is a great first step, Mm -hmm. but it separates. And if it's your child or your parent, you know, you're fully justified because yeah, in the physical world, mean, nasty, and ugly, but it doesn't connect. And so that's why um, my signature talk is forgiveness for business breakthroughs um, really um, addresses that. At a, at a soul level. And so when you can learn to see the see from the higher perspective why the narcissist is a narcissist and why the overgiver is like finally pissed off because they realize they're given to a, a something that's always always going to hurt them. Yeah. Right? And so hurt people hurt people. And so understanding that... Um, is uh, with love from seeing it from a higher perspective through seeing it through the eyes of the divine. Something magical happens when you forgive in your heart, mm. um, which is your fourth chakra, right? And your four, fourth chakra is um, for connecting and um, relating to people with love. But when you forgive yourself and others in your heart, it magically opens up the sixth and seventh chakra. Yeah. And the sixth and seventh is responsible for seeing through the eyes of the divine. And then, so then you can truly see. And then the law of attraction kicks into place because you're seeing and believing from love instead of from judgment, fear, all that stuff, right? Yeah, because all those feelings or emotions that we are stuffing down or we're not addressing, that's what causes the dis-ease in our body. and. When I did my own healing of PCOS, of polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome back in my 30s, it it was no pill. It was all energy and spiritual work that I was doing. Definitely, I think I'm doing it at a much, much greater level. But even at the level that I was doing back then, because it was my first real to go into, and I kind of dove hard, but it was still really, really powerful. I mean, it was so powerful that, like I said, I, I healed myself of that. And that's what our bodies are meant to do. We're not meant to be weighed down with all these stuck emotions that, and it's energy. It's energy just clogging up that pipeline and not allowing us to live our best lives or keeping us sort of like stuck down into a smaller version of ourselves. Yes. And so that's why I'm so passionate about breath work, you know, because, you know, um, uh, the spiritual healing transformation I've done, um, just I've never really done breath work until recently. And um I was powerful before that, right? And now it's like, holy cats, this is even more. So I really invite people to um uh figure this out. I mean, figure this out, sample this. I mean, I've got a I can share a screen and show you how you can get started. Would you like that? Absolutely. Okay, so here is just a little um screen. Um, I don't even know what you're seeing. Oh, there it is. Yep. And that's me. Um, my I can't see what I'm showing. Okay. So there's a picture. I can't see what I'm showing, but it says ND breath work, and then there's my website. And a QR code if you're watching the video, but don't worry, I will have all the links um on the description from whatever platform you're watching this from as well. Oh, that's awesome. Right. So but you can go to gracemoskeller.com and then there's a tab for 9D breath work mm. that will take you to a, a it's a it's a landing page, right? Where you can enter your name and email address. And then you get two free samples. They're um five minutes each. One is a breath work and sound healing for stress relief, you know, just a but it's only five to seven minutes, and then another one for energizing. Then below it is it just describes 90 breath work a little bit more. And then you you'll be on my email list. And um the email list describes all the journeys and keeps you up to date with um when they're being offered. And so okay. I, um I'm gonna stop the share again. Is that good? You think? Oh good? yeah, yeah. 
Okay. So the, the breathwork journeys are um, six days a week at different times peppered throughout the week. Okay. And once a month, I mean, each month, like for instance, um, stress and um, stress relief, mm -hmm. stress and anxiety relief is Monday night at 915 for this month. So every Monday night at 915, you can go and get stre stress relief. And okay. I think healing, um, Fear is on Saturdays. I'm, I may be wrong with that, but Saturday at 1 p.m. So Saturdays, fear at 1 p.m. every month. Next month, the same time slots will stay, but the journeys will change. Okay. So um, because, you know, it's recommended, you know, minimum three months um, once a week. Okay. And you will be a completely up-leveled. <laughs> enlightened, empowered, amazing person that's coming from love, that's um, free of so many unsupportive triggers, oh. so many patterns of lack and betrayal. And um, in, in this, it's really affordable. So if you do this once a week, and um, there's also other, you know, you can talk with me, we can come up with a strategy, but they're only $55 a session. Because it's group. Yes. Okay. And, and um, if you want, if you're serious about the three month thing, then I've got the three month club, the 90 for three month club, where you can get four sessions for the price of three. Ooh. And, then, and um, it also comes with two group healing um, sessions per month, plus a PDF on how to say affirmations and stuff like that, you know, good stuff like that. Are all the sessions live? Are they recorded? So they're, they're all live. Okay. Every single one of them. And there, there's no replays. No replays. And they're live because they are meant to. Um, what's really cool about doing them in a group is even though we may be on Zoom, um, we set the intention beforehand that we all are in a circle, that we all are collective, and yeah. that we all are in a group. And so the whole vibe of the whole thing right, rises. And that's how we can use Zoom, because really, there is no time or space. We're all connected. We are. Yes. Yeah. That, that's What's that? 432 hertz? Harmonies. 432 hertz. So the harmonies of nature. Um, and then also do them um, um, at your retreat or at my retreat. Um, I'm like so excited. This is really new for me, but what you're getting are recordings from this master, Brian Kelly, who's mm -hmm. done all this. And I'm in the process of creating um, a really amazing um, retreat wow. with, with a theme of really up leveling and stepping into your best self for relationships, for financial abundance, next level stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, and then also, um, um, I'm also traveling. If you're a beach place on the <laughs> East Coast, you have a yoga or wellness studio. Reach out to me, and I'll come. And um, I would gather up twelve people, and um, um, you know, and do a live live presentation there. It's awesome. Yeah, that would be incredible, all in person. I mean, it's incredible enough on Zoom or in. I mean, either way, it's in the headset. So, you know, you're you're sort of, but when you're just physically collected and then you can all talk, yeah, there's definitely, it's a little bit different, but well, I have a, still just my, powerful. Um, you know, I have um, a lot of empaths come to me because I'm an empath, right? right? And um, I shared this with, uh, she was the first person I shared this with. And she was like, yeah, no, I've been to breathwork journeys before and I hated it because- mm. uh, alive in person because everybody's moaning and screaming and, and stuff next to her and the impact yeah. on her just like taking it in. She couldn't concentrate on herself. So um, when she was like really pleasantly surprised that in the comfort of her own home, she can do this and then putting the um, eye mask on, mm -hmm. having the ear set. And then when there, there comes a point where you, cause you got to let go of all this stuff. And so there's yeah. a friend primal scream or two in there right and so you get a a pillow <laughs> and you scream yeah don't worry the 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 neighbors will not be calling 911 <laughs> yeah no they, they won't but i mean and so to do that around other people it's a little intimidating for some yeah that is very true that is very true
but the headsets and then what did I just put on me, but the headsets and the pillow um, and just the whole commitment and the holding space mm. and that commitment to this is for me. Yeah. And you're holding space no matter if you're on Zoom or if you're live. Either way, space is being held for the group. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. So, so yeah, that's what I got. Do you have any questions? I mean, I I just feel it's so amazing having experienced um a different kind of breath work, which it had music in the background, but it wasn't sort of the overlay down to all of the journeys have the voice overlay on them yeah yeah and i think that's the intense part because when you're listening to it if you've ever like you, you've got I, f- I forget what they call it like a dual do they call it like a dual voice the like it's like a dual voice where you have the voice that comes in and then it like comes in behind it too and then it comes in on one side and then the other side it comes from all around yeah, yeah it's pretty incredible well, yeah. Oh, and the, the healing your um, uh, ancestral lines is just amazing because your ancestors are really yeah. there. And that's the I, one I'm, I want. I really want to do the ancestral one because, and I'm sure I'm not the only person, but I for certain know that part of my purpose for being here is to clear a lot of the ancestral karma, trapped I, emotions. I, yes. No, no, no. Um, so the healing ancestral lines is so important because you're right. All of us, especially as empaths, we're here to do that. Yeah. And it's really exp- well in this, in that um, journey because they couldn't feel they, or they wouldn't, they couldn't survive, but we live in a time where yeah. we can feel and express our emotions. And so our light is here to get the gunk of, of yeah. ancestral trauma off of us and heal. And that's how we heal the planet. This is not no, just about you. Know. This is about us. Yes. As a humanity. Yeah. And healing ancestral lines are really great for inner child work too. It's like I, yeah. all of them, there's some sort of inner child work in every single one of us because she's the one or he's the one in charge. And when, when, uh, trying to figure, okay. So by healing our ancestral lines, does that include our past lives as well? Because I know a lot of us have past life healing work to do. This one, this one, in, this one in particular doesn't do that. But when I work okay. with people, yeah, I definitely do past life stuff. It's really, really easy. And like you do the Akashic records. Mm-hmm. And so you're able to heal within the Akashic lines as well. Um, I do Akashic records too. Yeah. Um, I, you know, just to be transparent is I went to go get formally trained in that, but I couldn't find anything that, um, I was more advanced than what they were talking about, you know, not to, uh. I just was. And so I bought a book and I'm, so I'm going through the process of reading the book and I went to connect with, with the, uh, in the, the Akashic records and the, and I'm, uh, I was home. Like, mm-hmm. they're like, welcome, Grace. We've missed you. And a tears are running down my face because they're my family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's kind of what I did. So, oh, but, no. I mean, the Akashic Records are like the, the the story, the book of our soul. It's, yeah, it, it, it's everything. And at this moment in history, we've all been granted access to it if you choose to tap in. And it is a huge part of our healing. And all these other things play into it. It's like yes. any modality plays right into your Akashic records because it's the healing of your Akashic records, which is the healing of your soul, your higher and, self. And it's that's really what be into your higher self is what. And that's I the feel like you're doing. That's the movement that we're all doing, all of us light workers. And we each have a unique way of doing it, each way of coming uh-huh. in. But like what you said, that the root thing is the healing of your soul. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, because that, where we're going forward, we are in control of that. And whatever your beliefs are, whether you believe that we're all going forward together or there's timelines breaking off or, or whatever. Um, this is what's going to get us to the paradise, to the garden of Eden, I guess, again, <laughs> it's healing ourselves. And the more that we are healed, the more that, you know, it's like, whatever is a, whatever's in abundance is going into the the field, right? The collective field. So if we're the vast majority of people are working on themselves, 
then that's what's going out into the field. And that's why all of this stuff is starting to become more and more less woo-woo, like, woo-woo and more, more mainstream as well. Yeah, we're coming out of the closet like everybody else. <laughs> yes, yes. And even I think people who've done this for a long time have been experiencing entirely new levels. Like you just said, you've been on this path for a long time. I've been on this path for a long time. But the level that I started at is it's so much higher now. So easy to do stuff. Whereas before it took yeah. years. Now and, and now you're, we're able, like you said, Grace, to let go of things in a much more rapid way. And, and it's less traumatic to your... Less system. traumatic. This isn't talk therapy. This isn't pharmaceuticals. This is your body healing itself. This is letting go. Letting go of the things that are stuck so you and can... your power back. And get your power back and our sovereignty back. And yeah. I think those are what we've really given up in exchange for that perceived fear and fear uh, in exchange for perceived safety from perceived fear. Perceived safety, fear, control, survival, that's all dictated by the brain. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're on the spiritual path, the whole idea is to not get rid of your brain and where, where your ego is housed, but have your heart love the brain so much that the heart, that the brain serves the heart and the yeah. heart serves the soul. And so like when I was talking about before, my fifth chakra is squeezing down and shutting off. I didn't work on my fifth chakra to open it. I worked on my lower sunset chakras where your personal, your power to create mm. is in the world. And um, when you, when as you, because when you wash and you know, that's the whole app, essence of my belief program, whether you do it private with me or in groups, is cleansing and watching and clearing um, all the consciousness and the blocks of your sunset chakras. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, then these naturally heal. And we work with lower self, higher self. You know, like what I said before, the anger into mutually beneficial self-respecting boundaries instead of blame, shame, guilt, revenge. And I think it's important to note that it's not like you're getting rid of these memories or whatever. It's just your perspective of them changes almost more neutralizes them. Like I can look at that incident, that trauma, that whatever it was with a more neutral way. I'm not so charged up any longer, or I'm not, like you said, I'm not being the victim. I'm not blaming. I'm not well, there's something called epic forgiveness and which this these 5D journeys guide you towards. They don't call it that, where um, your worst trauma is your best gift and you're grateful for it. So being grateful for even the most nasty, ugly, most horrible experiences of your life. That's a takes a lot of courage and a lot of faith and belief to trust in. Mm -hmm. But we do... I mean, as more and more of us do, it's going to be easier and easier and easier. We're just, we're like in that, you know, the bell curve of a yeah. of a, things. I think we're halfway up that bell curve right now in the spiritual I world. I, yeah, we're, we're on the cusp. Yeah, so, I definitely and, agree. So no matter if you have stuck traumas or if you have disease already, I yes. mean, this is a way to heal. Because once you heal the inside, it's going to show on the outside in your look, your appearance, your health, your wealth, and then and what you see and what you're waking up to every day. Well, yeah. And the, the other thing it, it helps for is, you know, how you know what you're supposed to do, but you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm vaguely familiar with that. Vaguely familiar with that. Well, um, this work is what gets you to like want to do what you're supposed to do. And you, you know, and that to me is like, oh my God, yay. Right. Like, yeah, it's great. You know, and then for me standing on stage is, you know, early and when, when I went to healing school, um, I had a huge awakening with the life purpose line, the crystal balls. Sound healing is huge. Um, that I was going to be standing on stages speaking my message. And I was just like, huh? And to be on that Bali stage. And to be present, charismatic, connected to the audience is my purpose. And I couldn't have done that because before I started, I was mm. squeezed off, shut down, couldn't. So um, 
that's the hero's journey. Everyone's got a hero's journey. And if you've got a, a disease, a chronic disease, a chronic illness, there's so many things out there to help. Um, and I will say that when you add the breath work and the mindset and the sound healing to your wellness patches, your life wave patches, to the um, clean eating and your exercise mm -hmm. and your daily meditations, when you add all those things up together, it's like an investment in yourself that just says upward spiral. Yeah. Like, like when you're, when, you know, when you do investing with money, you know, it's like a penny a day. You know, if you had a penny a day in like a month, you got a couple hundred thousand dollars or a billion or something. I don't remember what that number is, but one penny a day, this is that. So, you know, and no matter, find a healing method that suits you mm -hmm. and go for it. Yeah. Well, that is a great message to leave us on. So tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. We've already had the QR code up and I am going to put all that information directly to your 90 breath work um, information. Yeah. So tell us all the other good stuff. Um, so the best way to get in, the best way to get in with that is just to go to my website, gracemoskeller.com. And there's a tab for 90 breath work in there. And then that will get you into um, contact with me. And if you want to talk with me right away, um, find the link that says talk with Grace, <laughs> schedule something and I'll be there. We'll meet and we'll have a good time. Um, I have two. One is like, um, you know, if you have questions about breath work and, you know, where do I do it? Can I have it in my place? I want you at my retreat or I want to come to your retreat. Um, we can talk about that. Um, and, you know, what strategy do I need? Should I watch abundance first or fear first or awakening first? And I will interview you, find out where you're at. And from the, from finding out where you are right now, I can give you recommendations, right? Hmm. And then if you want to go deeper. And, and really, you know, you have a goal, like I want to stand on stage and feel amazing, or I want to um, up-level my business financially and impactfully, and I have a specific number I want to go to, or I really want to heal the relationship with my sons or my daughters or my ex-husband, whether they're living or dead or with my family, um, and because you want that connection. Mm. Um, that's when you you'll do the spiritual goal setting um, hour, and um, it's really good. It's kind of like the Dickens process, where we go, where are you now, and how's that affecting you? To where do you want to go, and how will that affect you? And then from there, I can offer you a specific program tailored to your budget and your um, ability to commit with time, money, and heart and soul. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. So I definitely highly encourage you to go down, download the two um, sample breathwork sessions and get a little feel for what it's like. And then imagine that, what are they about 50 minutes long, 50 minutes to an hour? Um, the So the samples are five minutes long and then the um, 90 journeys, yeah. they're, I mean, scheduled two hours, um, you know, two hours. Because, because we do some prep work that's beyond mm -hmm. There. And then we do post work. Like when I just was sharing with you, we didn't yes. do any post work, but the post work is really important for integration. Perfect. So everything you want to know about 90, go and get in touch with Grace. I have done it. I highly, highly recommend it. And I highly recommend Grace. She has been uh, a, a, a true blessing in my life. <laughs> Well, and ditto back. It takes one. It takes a blessing to know a blessing. It does. It does. And I appreciate you coming on. And yeah. I think with that, thank you for listening to another episode of The Wealth Within Us. And I will see you next time. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.